right, we're back for another Q&A on your questions, everything related to nutrition, foods, keto, and intermittent fasting. We have a lot of guests, and anything that I say is not meant to diagnose or replace your medical care. Check with your doc before implementing any of these solutions. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, Doc, we got somebody queued up, uh, Larry from uh, Florida. I'm not going to try to pronounce the, ta- the town he is. And Larry, make sure you're unmuted and you're on with Dr. Bird. First of all, thank you very much for taking my call. I Absolutely. appreciate it. Sure. Um, my question is, I, I followed your YouTube videos quite a bit. And anytime you suggest a supplement, if I feel that it's going to benefit me, I add it to my my uh, list. Uh, trouble is I'm down to like 10 or 11 supplements now. <laughs> I, could I could imagine. imagine. So my question is, are they going to affect my liver or my kidney? Yeah, yeah good, good question. question. Um, not, not if they're, they're, not not if they're, they're natural, natural supplements. supplements. Most of the supplements out there are in small quantities. They're not in massive quantities. And so I, I'm, I'm the same way. way. I like to test a lot of supplements out. out. I have a Warehouse, warehouse full of supplements. I'm always testing, testing things out, see how I feel. So um, no, it's, it's not going to. It's not going to conflict. conflict. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that. that. Um, um, you're, you're not. not I, mean, I mean, I don't really, really know what you're taking, about. but if you're, if you're taking, but they're all they're all things that you suggested. You know, yeah. D D three K two B twelve zinc, benfotamine, lion's mane, L arginine, things that you've talked about in your videos. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think um, I th- no, no they're, they're not going to they're, they're not going to be a problem at all. Um, one, one thing that you want to do, though, when you, though, when you take them, them obviously, you're, you're probably adding one at a time, time so you can, you can kind of see the effects. effects. For, For example, example um, a lot of the supplements I recommend are not going to detox you. But there are out there's some out there that will if you take too much, even like a probiotic, you can feel like you're detoxing. So. But, but the, the stuff that I'm recommending, recommending uh, you're not going to have a problem at all. Or what do you worry, worry about? Because they're food based. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Sure, sure no, no problem. problem. That sounds great. Thanks so much. Okay, why don't we kick it off with a quiz question, Dr. Berg? All right. So, what is easier on the gallbladder, MCT oil or coconut oil? And then I'm going to tell you why. But uh, let's see how many of you guys um, know this. It's uh, Actually, I released a video this morning, so you you probably know the answer if you've been watching my videos. So let's see what people say about that. That's terrific, Dr. Berg. Uh, let's see here. We are waiting for some questions to come in. So while we're waiting for that, why don't we go to uh, Nadine from Cairo, Egypt. And Nadine, if you would unmute yourself, you're on with uh, with Dr. Berg. Good morning. Hi, good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for having me. So um, my question is, uh, so I'm the adrenal body type and um, I've been watching all, almost all of your videos about the adrenal body type and I've studied it, I've, I've been doing everything right. So I've been into uh, intermittent fasting and keto for a year and a half now. I've lost uh, 22 kilograms. Um, everything was going really, really well, uh, up until, uh, maybe like five months ago, things starting to decline. And then I started to, um, watch more videos and I, uh, got the adrenal, uh, stress kit. So just everything is right. The sleep, the, um, the stressful environment, um, the, the stress kit, uh, the, the long walks. Um, the thing is, the problem is um, every week I go to do my in-body and I just keep losing muscle. You know, my body is still turning the muscle into sugar. Uh, even though uh, my carbs are really below 20 grams and I'm eating a moderate, moderate protein, enough fat. Um, I even started doing a a little bit resistance training. I thought this might be the problem because um, I've been doing the long uh, walks as a small kind of cardio, but then I thought maybe this would be the case. So even with the resistance uh, training, um, I'm still, my body is still, I'm losing a lot of hair, a lot of it. And um, just, yeah, even though I'm doing really everything right, c- keeping my macros really good, taking care of my muscle, my sleep, even taking the supplements, but still, you know, my muscles are being turned into sugar and I'm, 
I'm, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong, but I don't know what it is. So I was hoping if you could help me with it. Thank let's, you. Let's see if we can figure this out. So um, how do you actually know you're losing muscle? Is there any test that you're doing or just by looking at yourself? Yeah, I have the, the scale, the body composition scale oh, at, right. at home. Yeah. Right. Okay. So first of all, I used to have that in my office, a high-end model. And um, I don't trust those units at all at all. I think um, they're not accurate. The, uh, there's this, I think it's called a dexatren, dex, there's another test that you can do to, to measure accurately your muscle physiology. Yeah, that's the DEXA scan. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would do that instead because I don't trust those body compositions, especially the scales, even the things you hold with your hand. I don't trust those because I, I saw the same thing when it actually was false. So they're not the best way to identify muscle physiology. Now, the other thing that you, um, you're losing your hair, so that's that's the problem. Um, are you taking any trace minerals? Yeah, uh, okay. your trace minerals. Okay, good. Are you, and you're taking the B vitamins? Yeah, okay. nutritional yeast. Good, and how many are you taking per day? The, the, the bottle of yours, the three pills, the three times a day. Okay, good. And then what about, um, are you craving anything and do you have any other symptoms like fatigue or, or is that not an issue? Not at all. I have a lot of energy. I cannot sleep because I have so much energy. I'm not okay. hungry at all, like ever. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm in ketosis, but I don't know what's happening, you know, like something is, is wrong with my hair, but I don't know what it is. And then how about your sleep? Um, how many, you're not getting enough sleep? I'm waking up really refreshed, but with really tiny amounts of sleep, like six hours, and then I'm just up and going really well. I don't need much more time. Like before I got into this journey, I would sleep like for 14 hours a day, maybe 15, and still wake up tired. But now it's like six, seven, seven hours maximum, and then I have so much energy. <clears throat> okay, so this is what I think is going on. Um, I think the sleep is affecting because if, if there's lower levels of sleep, your high your cortisol is going to be higher, and your cortisol can break down excess of protein. So what I'm going to recommend um, is to take um, get some vitamin B5, a thousand milligrams, and I think you probably have my vitamin D. I do. I have it. So you take the vitamin D before bed. Take your trace minerals before bed and take the B5 before bed. That should work to help you sleep maybe another couple hours. If by a weird chance that doesn't fully handle it, then you need to add a really good probiotic and that will help you sleep. Those are the things that I would recommend because a lot of times the, um, the microbes in the gut make the B vitamins and sometimes when you um, when you start keto, the whole gut does change, and over time it can change, and then you can affect your ability to make neurotransmitters to help you sleep. So that's another area that I think that will just be the icing on the cake. No cake for us, but yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Murray. And you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, sure. That's great. Well, thanks so much, uh, uh, Nadine. That was great to hear from somebody around the world. And by the way, Taha uh, says hello, but wants a permanent and natural solution for a very weak nervous system. Says he has back pain and headache and tiredness. Please, 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 as they say, must share your precious knowledge. So sounds like a guy for keto and everything else. Well, the back pain, the best thing for the back pain is vitamin D3 at least 10,000 I use, maybe 20,000. And the way that you, the best, another good way to know that you're vitamin D deficiency, deficient, if you press on like your breastbone or your shin, you press on your bones, if they're tender, you need vitamin D3. And you can take that vitamin D3 and within a couple hours, you'll notice that tenderness goes away and uh, it definitely affects your lower back. Uh, that's the thing that I would go, go for at first. And also, um, of course, I'm assuming you're doing keto and intermittent fasting. If you're not, get on it quick because that that will help you. 
right, that's terrific. I tell you what, Dr. Berg, let's go to the answer for the first question, which asks, what is easier on the gallbladder, MCT oil or coconut oil? And 50% say MCT and 50% right down the middle say coconut oil. What say you, Doc? Well, it just tells me only 50% of the people are watching my videos. So it's MCT oil because um, those are the medium chain triglycerides. Another name for that would be medium chain fatty acids. You have the the small ones, the medium, and the large, right? So when you're taking MCT oil, you're getting 100% MCT because they're MCT. They're extracted from coconuts. When you're consuming coconut oil, you're only getting 15% MCT. The rest is the long-chain fatty acids. And so the unique thing about the MCT fats is they don't require bile. So they tend to bypass that whole liver, gallbladder, um, filter and they go right through, and you'll notice um, much better digestion, uh, much better um, assimilation. But you got to go very light at first because they can disrupt your gut if you're not used to it. So you take small amounts and then slowly add it more and more till you can handle more and more. But that turns into ketones, so it's good for your digestion. You have more energy, especially more cognitive energy. Um, you can put it on your salad, make salad dressing. You can put it in your coffee. You can just take it straight in a spoon. Um, but uh, MCT oils, I, I, I like it, um, especially for people that are transitioning, especially for anyone that has um, dementia and uh, Alzheimer's or any type of brain issue whatsoever. Well, that's wonderful. And uh, by the way, we, of course, have viewers from around the world. Uh, so we say a good morning from the UK, Canada, Panama, the Philippines, Egypt. France, Algeria, Pakistan, South Africa, Denmark, Sweden, Mexico, Japan, Hong Kong, India, Germany, Mexico, of course. And we also have someone, by the way, from Kurdistan. Uh, she is a doctor, Lamise, and we're going to bring her up next on the show. Stand by. And uh, that's an interesting area. And you are on the air, Lamise. Go ahead with Dr. Berg. Hello, Dr. Berg. Hello. Good evening. By the time of every good morning, yeah. thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, I have two questions uh, according to the keto. I was diagnosed by, uh, of having an insulin resistance and high level of cortisol a year and a half before. So my endocrinologist, she suggested for me to uh, have keto diet to treat both uh, and it worked uh, amazing for me. Like for the first month in keto, I managed to get rid of all the signs and symptoms. Wow. Fantastic. But after, yeah, after a year and a half, um, unfortunately, the past two months, I got uh, COVID-19. Uh, once uh, I was kicked out of keto, despite the fact that I didn't eat anything out of keto. But you know that infection will kick you out of keto because of the IV fluids and the antibiotic and other things that we receive. Uh, and after it, I had a food poisoning mm. and also kicked out of the keto. And my body seemed not to be able to get back to the ketosis so easily like before. Like it took me 10 days to 12 days to get to, to the ketosis again. Um, I... Um, thought that if I shift from keto to low carb for this moment, um, maybe this will help me to gain my strength back and uh, give me a little bit um, a rest from all the sickness that I faced these past two months. But I'm concerned about my insulin resistance. Is it possible for me to control the insulin resistance with the low carb and the second question is that I have been having a hormonal disturbance because of uh, um, long time of intermittent fasting between 20 to 25 uh, uh, hour for this past one year. I've been having an endometrial thickness more than the usual. So I have to start pro, um, hormonal replacement therapy. And I am very concerned about the weight that I might gain from that. I also would like to know if with low carb, can I manage not to have a weight gain with the hormonal replacement? Got it. How old are you? 
I'm 36. Okay. So, um, question. Now, you said you're doing low carb instead of keto. No, I didn't start yet. I am on oh. keto. I was thinking about shifting to low carb for the moment because my health is not very good. I can't control uh, staying in keto because of the antibiotic and the eye fluid that I'm taking so, at the moment. So, what? What's um, what is the difference between low carb and keto? Um, I must uh, enter some uh, clean carbs and some uh, fruits, increasing mm. the uh, carbs from twenty five to fifty gram per day. Yeah, mm. something like keto, but a little bit flexible, not I to get, get into the ketosis. I got it. I think that would be an experiment you would have to try because I think. Um, Unfortunately, we, when when you have COVID, they, I've noticed that they're putting people on uh, glucose pills, and insulin, while they're in the hospital. I was like, what the heck's going on? So there's a lot of things that they do to you, and then the infection creates inflammation, and that creates more worsening of your insulin resistance. So it's almost like you have to recover from that situation even more. So I think um, my gut feeling is you're going to recover better with the lower carb. Now, you can always just bring your carbs up to 50 use the berries mm -hmm. um, and maybe some other carbs. But um, but I think personally, you you will, you will uh, probably heal faster if you go lower and you do more longer periodic prolonged fasting. So let's say once a week you do a longer fast or once a month you do a longer fast because the benefits of, especially for your immune system and insulin resistance, when you fast longer are huge especially in repair. Um, because think about it, what is insulin resistance? We, it's just too much insulin. So how can we lower that? Well, if we add more carbs, it's going to worsen it a little bit. So I think that um, you need the nutrients, but just without the carbs. That's just my gut feeling. Um, as far as your hormones go, uh, a really good remedy for that would be DHEA. That will provide the building blocks for those hormones. So mm -hmm. I think that would help you as well as something called inositol, which will also help the hypothalamus pituitary and ovary axis. It'll help that whole pathway. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I would do. Um, you know, try it, try it out and see, see if that helps you. But uh, yeah, it's like you're right now you're recovering from a major infection so i understand it's probably rough yeah it's probably a little bit uh, difficult for me to commit to keto at the moment but i want something that won't let me get weight again and will control also my insulin resistance yeah that's right i understand um go ahead and try that and see see how you do um i will I yep let I us will. know Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. That's great. Thanks so much. Uh, great to hear from people in Kurdistan, for goodness sakes. And uh, I tell you what, to go to YouTube. We have a listener that wants to know the best way to address cold sores. Yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> that's a herpes simplex infection. And uh, I am going to release the video on that. Um, it's um, you want to keep a very, very strong immune system because as soon as the immune system is weak, it comes out of remission. Quite a few, quite a bit of the population has this and has the virus and it's dormant. And then it comes out um, when the immune system is affected. And so I have a whole video on this so you could, you know, you'll see all the different parts of it. But um, there's several things you can do. Um, lysine is, uh, is one remedy. Uh, the other one is um, zinc. Zinc is going to be very, very important. Um, and then the last one's going to be pretty easy. Just avoid stress of all kind, and you'll be totally fine. <laughs> easy thing to follow. Okay, how about another yeah. one from YouTube? Uh, Doa from YouTube, I was diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. How can I lose weight and help improve my thyroid health? Most hypothyroidism is Hashimoto, so it's an immune problem. So this one, you want to add selenium for sure. You want to avoid at all cost uh, gluten because gluten will mess up the thyroid more than anything. And then you want to also 
definitely get on keto and I'm going to fasting with all the nutrients. Um, and then find a really good probiotic because these autoimmune diseases really start in the gut. And so, uh, and the best thing for that permeability problem or leaky gut would be um, zinc, l carnosine. So you can watch my video on that because that's a, a really good remedy to close those little holes in your gut and support um, the, the part of the immune system that's affected by that. That's terrific. And by the way, listeners and viewers, make sure you stick around for the end of the show and Dr. Burr goes through a great new list of uh, videos that are going to help answer many of your questions. And speaking of questions, Doc, here's the next one. All right. So what is the best test or thing to identify to know if you have, if you are um, buying the real extra virgin olive oil? So what's the best test to know you have the real stuff versus the fake stuff, which by the way, is like 80% of extra virgin olive oil is like fake. So how do you know if you have the real stuff? That's the question. That's terrific. All right, dig on that. In the meantime, we have Catherine from Kuala Lumpur, who's got some questions. Boy, we're getting some people from all over the world. And Catherine, you're on with Dr. Berg. Hi, Dr. Berg. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yeah, sure. I'm Catherine from Malaysia. Yes, it's from Southeast Asia. Wow. Great. <laughs> okay. Um, my question is, um, I did a um, uh, blood screening test in uh, April, a couple of months ago. And then I have a very high um, vitamin B12 that is about, uh, the reading is 1,171 PMOL per liter. And uh, at the same time, my serum folate was at uh, also high, 60.7. All right. And mm -hmm. then um, there's also this reading that um, I'm concerned of. Uh, my 25 hydroxy vitamin D is uh, at 74, which is a borderline uh, reading. But um, well, and um, my my serum insulin at that time was normal, 12.2. And um, two months ago, I did a HOMA IR uh, a blood screening. It's recommended by my friend. Um, at that time, I have some symptoms, and he asked me to go take this test. And at that point, my insulin was only at 1.3 UIU uh, over ML. And then my HOMA IR was 0 0.3, but my HOMA beta cell function was actually at 23.6 only. So um, unfortunately, the doctor um, who, is, uh, who helped me to take this HOMA IR test, he couldn't explain to me uh, what this is. He doesn't, it's his first time doing this screening. You see, mm. this is um, according to my friend who recommended this uh, test to, uh, for me to do. He said not many doctors in, in Malaysia will know about this test. And true enough, the doctor who I asked to, to, to do this test for me, he don't even know how much blood to draw for this test. <laughs> All right, Dr. Burr, go ahead with the answer with that. Well, wait, wait, I, I, I have to find the question that she has first. So go ahead, just. Oh, sorry, um, go ahead, uh, yeah. Catherine. Yeah, I, yeah. All right, and then uh, I, my question is, why is my, is it safe to have a B12 at that, that reading? As according to my doctor, it's, it's actually normal. He brushed it off as it's, it's nothing to be worried about. And he did not highlight to me why um, is my uh, 25 hydroxy vitamin D is at that level too. And I also did an ANA, um, um, which because uh, which is uh, at the the titer is at 80. The reason why I'm doing all this screening because I have some symptom and I am a person with only half of my thyroid gland. Uh, I have them removed 27 years ago. Okay. So, and then I, yeah. 
So I, I'm not sure whether it's all this link up and is this normal? What is what is your symptom? What is your symptom of what's your main symptom you have? Okay, I gave I give birth. I given birth to my uh, youngest daughter two years back, and at that time my pregnancy was not easy. And then I gained uh, a lot of weight, and uh, I was weighing at 92 kilo. Mm, and then after giving birth, I I realized that I have a lot of flashes. Uh, on off, I I have. Uh, hot, my face, my cheek was burning hot and then sometimes I sweat profusely and I have palpitations and anxiety. Uh, at first, I thought it was because of a trauma that I have last year because a friend of mine passed away unexpectedly. So, And I went through a deep depression for at least a couple of months and I couldn't sleep really well. So I thought it was all because of that, but after I recovered from from that trauma, and I still get the flashes uh, on my face and some palpitations, and okay. and I and the and so, the weight I I get, yeah. And so, I could- so this is what I'll do. So uh, just I'll have to cut you off there. Yeah, unfortunately, um, this is kind of going beyond the simple question because it's a complete evaluation. Anytime you're you're getting all the values from someone's blood and you want to get all the symptoms. It'd take probably a half hour to go through all of your history and, and do an evaluation, which I can't yeah. do on this show. So, but I can give you some data. Okay. Um, you had a major stress event. Any, I think I would, I will, I would also get the 23, I think it's called 23 and me that genetic test to see if there is a problem with methylation with your B vitamins. And, uh, and you can look that up. But the thing is that uh, I think you need right now more B1, a lot more B1. And I would also take uh, a lot more vitamin E, uh, which will help the, uh, the pituitary in that pathway. Um, of course, the last thing I would do, because you had an ANA test, is I would get some type of product that has thyroid gland in it and there's the standard process one called thyrotrophin there might be some other ones out there that are thyroid glandulars and just take one before bed which actually is a really good thing for the antibodies to the thyroid um that's what i would do and um so thank you very much but uh, that's it's that's that would take us a, a little too long to go through every single value and give you a bunch of recommendations but Let's go with that for right now. That's terrific. Well, Catherine, we certainly wish you well, and thanks for calling in from Kuala Lumpur. That is uh, terrific. And while we are waiting for answers from our questions, why don't we go uh, to uh, Ritu from New Delhi, India. And Ritu, why don't you uh, unmute yourself, and you're on with Dr. Bird. Yes. Um, Can you hear me? Yes. Perfectly. Yes. Greetings from India, Dr. So happy to see you face to face. Um, Doctor, I've been following you for the last five years. Um, I started um, with uh, intermittent fasting, um, 16-8, and um, I lost weight with that very quickly. I was in good health. Um, I did that for three years. And then last last year, I had COVID-19. I discontinued with uh, intermittent fasting. Um, for almost two years, I was not doing it. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I'm, I'm, I'm also, I'm menopausing. I'm 50, I'm menopausing. Uh, I started intermittent fasting again three months back. Um, it didn't help me. So I, I'm, I started um, OMAD. I was on one meal a day. Um, so that, that didn't help me either. Uh, I've, I've got the typical menopause belly uh, now, and I have, I gained weight in just the by the book menopause places. Um, and so when that OMAD didn't help me either, I started keto. Now, for for last um, almost seven weeks, I've been doing OMAD with keto. Um, and I'm doing the walks. I'm doing the apple cider. I'm doing whatever your videos have asked me to. I haven't lost an ounce in, in seven weeks. Okay, good question. Let me ask you this: um, Have you yes. lost your appetite or you, and your cravings completely? Uh, no, no, not really. Not okay. really. I'm I'm hungry, but I don't eat. Okay, 
So that tells me that there's something else going on because um, either... I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to add, I'm in ketosis. I keep doing the, the strip urinalysis um, test uh, yeah. all the time. And, and it shows. So I've last four, five weeks, every time I do that, I'm in ketosis. So it's either moderate or large ketones. So um, are you noticing any size in your clothes? The clothes are looser or your, your stomach is a little bit looser as far as your pants? Well, not really, doctor. Not really. Okay. And then how about your sleep? Are you have any, you have sleeping problems? Okay, so um, about uh, seven, eight weeks back, I ha did have sleeping issues. And then I started taking um, uh, three milligrams of uh, melatonin uh, supplement. Yeah. Uh, and uh, since then, I've been sleeping really well. So I sleep for seven to eight hours, and it's, it's absolutely sound sleep, except for just getting up to go to the loo once or twice. That's it. Okay. So the fact that if you're an OMAD and you're appetite is still a problem that tells me your cortisol must be just too high from this menopausal thing and mm -hmm. um, so now we have to somehow deal with that i would shift gears keep doing what you're doing but i would shift gears to support the adrenals i would do an adrenal that's why in my book right so there's four body types if you're if you're having a problem you go to one body type so the adrenal body type is the area that you need to focus on um and um, maybe using some more adaptogens, things like that. But you might be that special person that needs to go one step further, which is going to be one meal every other day. Mm -hmm. But make sure you have all your nutrients in place so you can really do it because your metabolism is being affected by the high cortisol. Um, and if you're, do you have any type of, Stand by, folks. I think we've got a little uh, intermission here yeah, from think... Dr. Berg. Stand by, Ritu. Okay. Folks, we're reestablishing a connection with our host. Stand by, please. Okay. Thanks for your patience, folks. Uh, I think we're pretty quickly going to have Dr. Berg on. Stand by.
Sorry about that. All right, folks, stand by. We'll get you back up here, Dr. Berg. And you are on with Ritu. And Ritu, you're back yeah. on the air. Okay, so Dr. Yes. I, I think we lost you when you were telling me that I'm the kind of person who needs to be on OMAD every other day. Yes, I was just about to tell you the secret of the universe, and I just shut off. So, uh, yeah, OMAD yeah. once every other day to be a little more strict because, unfortunately, um, what's countering is this darn menopause thing, which the cortisol is activating sugar, and it's countering things. So, um you know, it's one of those, it's like you have to just work on your adrenals and then fast longer than everyone else and um, take a lot of vitamin B1 and um, try to try to keep, take a little more vitamin D and uh, work on your sleep and tweak these other factors. Um, uh, doctor, is, I'm uh, sorry. Um, I'm, uh, I'm already uh, doing one meal a day. Uh, right. Every, all, seven, all seven days. One meal every other day. Yeah, no, so yeah, so right now I'm doing every day. You're saying I should do it every other day, not every day. That's correct, because that way yeah. you'll have a, <clears throat> you're going to take it to the next step, and some people need to do that with a very slow metabolism. And so you are you just have to have a really good nutrient-dense meal, and then you're not going to eat for another 48 hours. Okay, so the day I'm eating, um, oh, am I am I doing a fasting for... 16, 8, or am I having all three meals? No, you're doing you're doing that OMAD, one meal in that day. One meal every yes. other day. Every other day. No, every other day. So so the days when I'm eating, now I'm asking the days when I'm eating, then yeah. how many meals am I eating that day? One. No, one. So, so one meal. One, me one meal every other day. That's right. And so... So, so, so what you're saying is well, alternate days, it's one meal a day. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. So and I have I'm, a video on this. You can look up. It's, it's called uh, just search Dr. Berg uh, one meal every other day. And I have a video on that. You can I, have, I show you the details on that as well. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Ritu, from New Delhi. We appreciate you uh, calling in. Now, let's go back and see if we can get um, some answers from our latest question. Just a moment. Okay. All right. So what's the best test? Yeah. So Steve, what did you get? Uh, stand by. I got so far behind. It was a really interesting uh, group of questions and I lost my place. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, this is interesting. So quiz number two, uh, what's the best test to know if you have extra virgin olive oil? Uh, and that was 75% uh, say the smell uh, density or color, 20% say the harvest date, and 5% say certification. I have a sense that there's another answer. Well, you're all right, but there's another thing that's a real good way to know if you're actually consuming it, and that would be you get that little tickle in the back of your throat, like almost like you're going to cough, because the main phytonutrient, the real super healthy anti-inflammatory phytonutrient in olive oil, the real stuff, uh, has receptors for the back of the throat. And so it's a real kind of like a little little irritation there when you start to have it. And if you have that, then you know you have the real stuff. If you don't, then you're not going to have any of that effect at all. And I didn't even know I was consuming the real olive oil until I had the real olive oil. <laughs> and it's such a difference. So stay tuned for that video too, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover that. All right. Well, speaking of oil, Benny from YouTube wants to know if he can take oregano oil capsules to help with herpes simplex 2. Uh, I think that's a smart idea, but don't forget the zinc. All right. Don't forget the zinc. And then Sandy from YouTube, uh, I do OMAD and clean keto, and I felt good when I first started, but now the last few weeks I have no energy. What on earth is going on? You need to... You need, uh more B vitamins, that's usually going to be, you know, you might want to also increase your potassium. Those are the two things that will increase energy on keto because <clears throat> the requirement of the mitochondria, when you start to burn more fat, um, it goes up with certain B vitamins and especially potassium. So those two will actually give your energy back. If you're not substituting that, you might just feel tired. Um, there is also something called keto 
flu, which I'm not sure is one of the questions, Steve, but um, it might be. That's a little slightly different. Oh, I see. Interesting. Okay, well, let's see. Let's go uh, to our next question uh, and get that out on the air. All right. What, this is interesting. What percent of children consume ultra-processed foods? Now, I'm talking about the real bad refined junk foods, like the stuff that, that you get at fast food restaurants, uh, the industrial cereals, for example, that are all sweetened, right? Um, take a wild guess what percentage of children consume ultra-processed foods. Let's see what people have to say about that. All right, audience, it's on you. And by the way, here's something close to home for me. Zenifloss from YouTube wants to know why he would have some issues digesting nutritional yeast tablets. And I ram them down and uh, I just feel terrific. But maybe, uh, you know, my experience is not that of everyone else. What do you think is going on, Doc? Well, I think maybe he's swallowing them. You need to chew them because <laughs> they're they're, sli they're slightly big pills. You can crush them up, put them in peanut butter, but... Um, they do stick to your teeth, and it's uh, unfortunately I've not found a, a good way to uh, put that in a capsule or a tablet other than just add a little bit of um, uh, vanilla, natural vanilla, so it has a little offset the taste, and then you can chew them. And uh, I have them every day, and you you could definitely have them be right before you go to bed too. It's uh, it'll help uh, if you have any type of stress or excessive thinking at night when you're trying to sleep and you just want to turn it off. It's, that's the B vitamin deficiency, specifically B1. All right, that's terrific. So you munch them up, you'll get used to the taste. I love them. And now from Poland, we have Medhat uh, with his one question. Uh, Medhat, make sure you unmute yourself and you're on with Dr. Berg. Hello, Dr. Berg. I just want to make sure that you can hear me uh, well. Are you able to hear me well? Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. So, um, the, the Dr. Berg, I actually, um, first of all, you have no idea how much I'm, I'm glad to be here. And I guess we all know that, um, like long story short, be, I, I knew you in your channel three months ago and I followed the, 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 the um, like let's say the diet and keto and I lost around six kilograms um, before my holiday, right? Six kilograms on keto. And I know it sounds funny, but it is realistic. I'm trying to find out a way to, or kind of a remedy to stop cheating on holidays. What we can do or what I can do to, to, when we, to, to that when we go on a holiday or on a break or on a, or on a not necessarily a party, but like somewhere that is because I tend to feel, oh, I'm going to go on a holiday. So, yeah, let's go to Crave. Let's go to eat. It's my time to, to have a rest and to eat and to break. I'm trying to drink as much water as possible. Um, um, but at the same time, I, I, I feel like always try to find out a way to stop cheating on holidays. Right. 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 Uh, yeah, so I'm, so I'm all ears. So there is something I'm bringing back. I'm bringing back. I used to have this uh, one product that I I got rid of because I, you know, I didn't think uh, people <laughs> needed it, but um, I'm bringing it back. And it's uh, yeah. it's basically, it's a liquid form of gemnema herb, the gemnema herb. And so you spray this thing in your mouth. You can actually even go buy the herb right now, gemnema, <clears throat> in a tablet and chew it and it'll gemnema. gem it's called gemnema herb yes and okay. uh, it's an indian herb and you let's say you're going to this holiday and there's going to be food you just chew on it what's going to happen it's going to help mm -hmm. your blood sugars but it's also going to block any any sensation it's going to turn um sweet into sour like you will not be able to perceive the taste of sweet ah. I have seen it in one of your videos, I guess. Yeah, and it ruins the pleasure of carbohydrates. And uh, that's one way to ruin a party. I mean, a uh, uh, <laughs> craving. And you'll uh, you'll love it. And so I'm going to turn this into a spray, okay. too. So you just spray a little squirt, boom. And it'll last like maybe one to two hours, and you just will not taste carbs. So 
Here you are, if you try to drink some wine, for example, drinking vinegar, if you do yeah. um, a soda, it'll be disgusting. Uh, if you do a donut, it'll taste like baking soda. And so, therefore, that's the way to counter the cheating. So, Jamnima herb. And I can order that online. I can find it around. Like, is it available? Yeah. Yep, anywhere. You can find it anywhere. It's, it's very awesome. available. Yeah. Awesome. We'll go try that out. Dr. Berg, thank you so much. I have no idea how much I love you so much, and I'm so thankful for that. Thank you so much, Steve, for this opportunity. <laughs> okay, great. Good luck. That's terrific. Oh, thank thanks so much. So we got a lot of cheery folks in uh, Poland. That's wonderful, and it sounds like he's going to be really reaping the benefits of uh, keto and intermittent fasting and uh, that awful herb you just described that will keep him from overeating. And, of course, I recommend... Uh, as you know, nutritional yeast. Whenever I get the urge, I just throw a couple of those things down and crunch them up, and suddenly I am sated for the next whatever period of time. Let's go to our latest quiz question and get some answers. So what percentage of children consume ultra-processed food? And suggest 95% uh, say um, it's 95% or higher. 5% say it's lower than 95%. Uh, did that make sense? Wow. So 95% yeah, say it's 95% or higher. 5% say it's lower than 95%. Who's right? I'm surprised. I, I, I wouldn't think people even guess it's that high, but it's it's actually 67%. Like more than two thirds of their diet is ultra processed. Now, when I heard that, I mean, I'm like, this just can't be, but it's actually true. It's scary. So um, to have your next generation, the people are going to ta be taking care of you, Steve, they're going to be carboed out to the extreme <laughs> and junk food junkie. It's like talk about insulin resistance, obesity, diabetes. Oh my goodness. So um, I'm doing a video on that. And uh, I think um, if you have kids, you need to get them off this, this junk because it's a, it's a situation. So I will be doing a lot more videos on this too. Like what to feed a child, what to, what to eat if you're pregnant. These are just really important things that people need to know, especially if you're a parent. All right, that's terrific. And so we did, Dr. Berg, just discuss what we don't want to eat. Here is another question that involves what we might want to eat. Go ahead, Dr. Berg. Yeah, why would someone need to take DHEA? Well, our audience has been very prompt and smart today, so I'm sure that they're going to come back with some fantastic answers on that. And in the meantime, we have got the lovely Karen, and I don't know where Karen's coming from. She'll probably let us know. But Karen, unmute yourself, and you're on with Dr. Berg. Hi. I'm in Connecticut. Um, so nice to be here with you. I listen oh, to everything you put out. I still out. can't hear you. Maybe you want to unmute. Oh, wait, wait. I need to unmute you. Okay, there we go. go Stand ahead. by, Karen. You're good. Wait, am I there? Okay. Um, so nice yep, to be with you. I'm, you I'm great. I'm calling in from Connecticut. Um, I listened to everything you put out, whether I think it relates to me or not, and it always does. And I appreciate your science and what you give us to empower us to take care of our own wellness. Um, I, I've been on Nomad four months. Um, the first three months were great. Um, didn't have any problem except the expectable, you know, moving into something new, the keto flu and things like that. But going into month four, I became like absolutely ravenous um, for at least a period of two weeks. I'm not sure if I've moved through that yet or not. Um, it's the scale seems to be dropping off a little bit. My blood sugars um, initially dropped. I'm a di diabetic type two was on metformin. I stopped mm -hmm. taking metformin three and a half months ago. Um, my sugars would drop into the 80, 90, but I'm still having difficulty with a fasting blood sugar being about 125, 135. Um, it doesn't drop mm. no matter what I do, exercise, um, apple cider vinegar before, you know, before bed during the day. Um, it drops when I eat, um, I notice. So there's a couple of things that happen, and I'm not sure if this relates or not. Um, I had a friend who committed suicide um, I, um, at about the same time. Um, I am in healthcare. I'm a hospice social worker. I'm on vacation this week, so I think everything's better this week. Um, I think probably stress has something to do with it, and I do have chronic PTSD with episodic um, exacerbations. Um, so I'm not, I, I haven't seen any videos on that, although I haven't really um, researched any videos you've done on that, but I wonder how much of this might be related. The other thing that happened is the uh, CPAP, uh, that I use has been recalled for having a foam inside it that causes cancer. 
Um, so now I'm experiencing nightmares and I'm not sure if that's all related or not. I, I have a really good solution for you. And I, it's interesting, before I graduated, I wanted to go practice in Connecticut simply because in the fall, you guys have the best um, scenery. It's just gorgeous out there. I can't, can't imagine. But getting back to your topic, I would... Um, there's two things that you need to take right now. Um, you need higher amounts of vitamin D3. That's good for uh, sleep apnea. That is really good for insulin resistance. Your insulin receptors, um, the cell that makes um, insulin, the beta cells, need a good amount of um, vitamin D. So I would take 20,000 IUs of vitamin D before bed, before bed. Um, and then I would also take, and I'm not biased of my own vitamin D, but you might want to take mine just simply because it has the, it has the zinc in it, has the B6 in it, it has the bile salts, it has MCT in there, it has vitamin K2 to help you really get the best absorption. Take two of those before bed. And then the other thing you need to take is some B1. You need B1. And I would take that before bed. Um, why? because it's going to um, greatly tweak things for you. The nightmares will go away. You'll feel less stress. Your blood sugars will come down, and then you're going to feel a lot better. The fact that you're, you've been doing keto and your blood sugars are still that high tells me there's probably a higher cortisol, which is the stress part. And so the combination of D and B1, I think will just, just nail it. I mean, you may possibly need to be even some B5. I don't know, but... Start with the D3 and the B1, and I, I bet you you're going to just feel so much better. Um, don't be afraid to take more of that, but um, it's great for people that have uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome. You're just going to feel calm. You're going to feel weak. You want to do um, a lot of long walks, get out in nature, you know, and um, that's what I would do. Keep it simple and, um, and let us know how you do with that. Okay, Karen? How much of the B1? Honestly, um, as much as you could find, I, I honestly, at this point, I don't even care if it's synthetic or not. I would take maybe a hundred milligrams. Um, and then, and then try to find a natural version of B1 as well. If you can find one, they're hard to find. Um, you can also take, um, you know, if you take my nutritional yeast, it has the B vitamins, but you're going to probably, you're going to need nine a day. Um, if you can have that much, but just because it has, it's not as super concentrated, so you just need more of it. But um, uh, the B vitamins are going to be your your go to uh, for what's going on inside your body. Now that's terrific. Well, boy, you sure have a lot of stressors on you, Karen, and all our thoughts and prayers are coming your way. So best of luck with all that. And boy, hospice, if that's what I heard you were part of that's such a, a wonderful uh, giving thing because that's a tough thing to go through and i just always so admire those that are willing to put themselves on the front line that's a tough job but so necessary so anyway it's dr stressful. berg yeah, too, yeah. Um, Very look, stressful. now this is interesting i used to dump this stuff in my pool so i can't get used to it but uh we have a listener from youtube that wants to know if diatomaceous earth may help boost their immune system i know it'll clean a pool it, it'll actually, it's really good for a lot of different things. It's good for the gut. It's good for heavy metal uh, toxicity. It's good for toxins in general. It's good for microbial imbalances. Uh, uh, it's good to clean out your pool. And it's also will kill insects too. So it has, it has multi-purpose uh, type of it's a clay. Um, and uh, it um, tends to, um, like a magnet, pull things to it. So it's, it's good on an empty stomach, of course, um, to take, um, periodically. Well, that's, video. that yeah. is absolutely terrific. Okay. So here we go with the answer for our quiz question number four, and let's bring that up so we can remind people what the heck we were talking about. Why would someone want to take, in addition to diatomaceous earth, take uh, DHEA and our audience 68% say DHEA increases or improves hormone function. 22% say it increases or improves brain function. 10% say it improves cellular function and overall health. Are we on the right track? 
Yes, you're on the right track. I, it's a it's the precursor. It's the building block for all the, uh, the steroid hormones because it's made from cholesterol, and it's really good for women and men who uh, are gone have gone past the age of fifty into menopause or menopause or andropause or whatever you want to call it. But uh, if you're if you're menopausal and your hormones are low, especially estrogen and progesterone and testosterone, even DHEA is the thing to build that back up. And so it's really good for women that are considering hormone replacement therapy. I would go for that instead because it's a natural way. The only thing is, if you're female, um, start with 10 milligrams and slowly increase it because if you have too much, you'll make too much testosterone. And and that might not be a good thing if you want to avoid you know, a mustache or a deeper voice. Two things I've always uh, been rooting for. But anyway, you know, we keep our promises here on the Dr. Berg Show. And we, t- we said that Dr. Berg is going to brag about some of his upcoming videos, and here they are. Okay, so the best mushrooms for mental health. These mushrooms are a fascinating fungus, and they, uh, they do a lot for your immune system, anti-cancer, but they're also good for your cognitive function, for uh, countering depression. So uh, I'm going to release that video. I just released the MCT one today. Also, I'm going to release the one on green bananas for diarrhea. Steve, that's going to be a popular one. Uh, also, this one on hidden drugs, this was shocking. There, There's a whole black market of supplements out there that are, they actually use drugs, pharmaceutical drugs in supplements, and they're over the counter. You need to know about that. Um, Guta Cola, the benefits of Guta Cola, um, that relates to something called telomeres, which are like the the thing at the end of your shoelaces, if you take a look at your 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 jeans, you have these little end parts, and they protect the end parts. And that's as you get older, that that protective mechanism decreases, and you're more at risk for dying of some type of disease. So if you can keep your telomeres very very supported uh, with that product and other ones, um, you can live longer. So. Uh, let's see. I also have some other videos coming out on um, blood thinners. <laughs> um, people that are uh, on COVID, they're going home with blood thinners. Um, even well, I'll let that video speak for itself. And um, and some other surprise topics. How about that, Steve? Okay, that's terrific. And by the way, this is just such an interesting question. Why don't we close on this? So uh, another one from YouTube, are keto desserts okay for cravings? And what? here's the, the, the stumper. What's the best sugar substitute in your opinion? Well, I think there's two things. Look, if you want something that tastes like sugar, uh, xylitol to me seems like a real good one. And also something called um, allulose is a good one. Uh, Make sure it's non-GMO, though. Um, But I think if you're looking for lowest on the glycemic index, like zero, stevia, monk fruit are are good, and erythritol are good, too. It's kind of like you're going to have to test them out to see which one you can do. There's a new one that uh, I'm researching right now that actually comes from sugar, but it's zero on the glycemic index. It's something brand new. Um, So... I'll, I'll be experimenting with that too before I even promote it. Um, and then that was part of your question, Steve. I think there was something else right before that. Well, let's there? see. Uh, you just wanted to know if keto desserts are okay for cravings. Well, I guess if they have the proper sweetener, then, I, then they are. Do you think they set people off? I think they may. You, you want to test them out. Sometimes I think it creates a lot of digestive issues, and sometimes ingredients are not so keto-friendly. But um, it's a good substitute, especially in the beginning. Um, but the way that you really know keto is working is if your appetite and your cravings are completely gone and you have no further need for anything sweet. So that is, um, that, that means, you know, you're getting into keto for sure. That's wonderful. Dr. Berg, we've done it again. We're out of time. And uh, just so the audience knows, you're going to be working feverishly throughout the week to produce another fabulous show next week. And we sure appreciate everybody dialing in. And, uh, with that, Dr. Berg, why don't you take us out? Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I won't develop a fever from the feverish work that I'm going to do this next week. (laughs) Have a great week. I will see you uh, next. I'll see you all week, but I'll be sending you emails very early in the morning.